Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you view this video. Uh, I'd like to take a couple minutes to do a short read aloud for today. I'm going to use my Epic account again as we've practiced the last two days and we know how to get there and it's also listed in our Google Classroom um, under our login information for important websites and you'll see that getepic.com is one of those important websites and also our class code is listed if you still need it. When you look at your Epic account, I decided to do a nonfiction text today since we've done two fiction texts already. So I took a look, I browsed up at the top, I typed in National Geographic as I like to learn different things about the world. I'm going to select this first book here. Um, I can also search by age. I can search by reading level, if you remember your reading level from this past year before we went out um, due to the pandemic. Um, so there's lots of different great resources. Um, some of you might really be interested in nonfiction texts. I'm going to take a look at this first book here, Get Outside Guide. Um, I don't think that we'll have time to read through the entire book as this one is much lengthier than the first two stories that we've looked at. So let's take a look inside. We see a table of contents. Um, a lot of these features you're used to from third and fourth grade, looking at some of those text features. Also, let's take a look getting outside. I'm going to take a look and see if there's a topic that really interests me. Just for our read aloud today. Water everywhere. Ah, at the beach. As some of you probably read in my teacher bio or information about me, I wrote down that I absolutely love to go to the beach, whether it's the Jersey Shore or if I'm lucky enough to get to the Bahamas or Mexico, somewhere where the water is warm and there's palm trees. So let's take a look at this page for our read aloud today. Wouldn't it be awesome to be on that beach right now, guys? At the beach. Beaches are narrow strips of land made up of sediments that lie along the edge of an ocean, lake, or river. Beaches form when water and wind beat against land over thousands of years. This continual action loosens rocks from the land or breaks the land down into tiny particles. The wind and water then carry these sediments to the shore where they deposit them. Over time, the sediments build up and form a beach. If you see that the text is too small for you to read, you can do a pinch and zoom like you would on an iPhone, a smartphone, or an iPad. That image is really interesting. I've never seen sand of that color. Look down. Is the sand on your beach brown or white? If so, it may be composed of quartz, a mineral that makes up land masses. Quartz is the most common mineral in sand, but it's not the only one. You can identify the different minerals by their colors. Red grains are usually garnet, and green grains are olivine. Pink sand, which is common in the tropics, comes from weathered coral, while black sand is the result of hardened lava from volcanoes. Look around. How many seashells can you see? Chances are, a lot. Seashells can be found scattered across most beaches. The shells, which come in many colors, shapes, and sizes, are the protective coverings of mollusks, a group of animals without a backbone that live in the water or in damp areas. Mollusks can include sea slugs, olive-shaped marine animals called chitons, mussels, clams, and deep sea creatures called tusk shells. Mollusks have soft bodies, so they really, so they rely on their tough shells to protect them from predators and rough waves, ocean waves. Animals. Mollusks aren't the only animals that live at the beach. Birds, such as pelicans and seagulls and crustaceans, such as crabs, lobsters, and shrimp, make their home at the beach. In addition, the ocean is home to many varieties of fish. Have fun! Did you know that you can use the shape 
of seashells to identify the mollusk that it housed. Collect as many different seashells as possible. Then examine the shapes. Long, flat shells with eight overlapping plates are typical of chitons. Tube-shaped shells that are open on both ends belong to tusk shells. Hinged shells are made by bivalves such as clams, oysters, and mussels. Large spiral shells are the work of gastropods such as conchs, sea slugs, and calories. Fun fact, if a sea star loosens, loses its arm, a new one grows back in its place. It's interesting. I hope you enjoyed the read aloud for today and I will do another one for tomorrow. Have a great night.